Welcome wrestling fans, welcome to Curtain Jerk and as always I am your host Jacob Grandi reporting for the Main Event Marks YouTube channel and the Dragon Suplex Podcasting Network. What a few days it has been in the world of pro wrestling. We're going to be going into it, we're going to be talking about WWE news, we're going to be talking about no Pro Wrestling Noah versus New Japan Pro Wrestling, we're going to be talking about AEW, the week that was in AEW, but let's jump right into the WWE news, guys. Of course, we know it's January, right after Wrestle Kingdom. The next thing I get excited for as a wrestling fan is the Royal Rumble, one of my favorite, favorite events, uh, going all the way back to, uh, I think, 1996. But of course, we know the last few years, the Royal Rumble event has incorporated two Royal Rumbles, the Men's Royal Rumble and the Women's Royal Rumble. This year, the Women's Royal Rumble will feature the Impact Knockout World Champion, Mickey James. Of course, Mickey James, a legend in uh, WWE. She got fired during those massive firings of 2020 and 2021, uh, sent to her stuff was sent to her in a trash bag. She took a picture of it, put it on Twitter. She was upset about it. And then, you know, she goes to NWA with her husband. She goes to Impact, where she had wrestled there for years, where she actually met her husband and made a name for herself in Impact as well. Won their world championship again, and now here it is, an un- virtually unprecedented. You got to go back to, uh, I mean, great Sasuke with Michinoku Pro in 1997. You got to go back to uh, ECW Invasion in 1997. You got to go back to Jushin Thunder Liger wrestling Tyler Breeze at that one takeover to where you see the WWE partnering with another promotion. This is big, especially Impact. They talked for years how they didn't know what Impact was and all kinds of shit when Impact was a far number two. Now, Impact is, I would say, a distant number four. I would put New Japan Pro Wrestling ahead of Impact in the North American landscape, as popular as New Japan's been the last few years. But this is really cool. Summer Rae, of course, is going to come out, but she's going to come out as well as a legend in the Royal Rumble match. But she is not on the level of Mickie James. I don't think anyone is arguing that. And the added bonus... That Mickey James is the Impact Champion. Who else will we see? The rumors are flying. Rumors are flying that they're working with AEW. Of course, Impact is working with ROH. So they have their own kind of forbidden door thing opening up with Ring of Honor. Uh, just that, Which just tantalizes the imagination. Who else will we see? I mean, Deanna Perrazzo. Someone who people regard as the top lady in 2021 uh, used to work for WWE left on bad terms but of course Mickey James left on bad terms well we see Deanna Perrazzo who is the current uh, AAA women's champion in the Royal Rumble I think that would be pretty cool to see uh, I don't see them going outside of someone who hasn't wrestled for them before I do think that they're going to stick to people or ladies that are in other promotions that have worked with them before. I know, like, you know, when they post shows on the WWE Network, usually they only post shows that feature wrestlers that have wrestled for them before. So with that kind of idea going on, I think that they're going to continue that idea where if you wrestled for them before, you can wrestle for them now, even if you're signed to a different promotion. I mean, hell, they fired, like, so many women... Uh, during these massive cuts, they might have to do that. There's, I think there's like less than 60 women under contract for the WWE right now. And you got to have 30 spots for the Rumble. And I don't think, you know, some of those women are women in the UK, NXT, and things like that. And you want to kind of save these spots. You want to have the Royal Rumble be special. You can't just have a bunch of people come out. And then crickets. You got to have these big names. Maybe... I mean, I saw a meme. I don't know how big this meme is, but uh, it was suggesting that AEW was going to lend some talent over there. Um, Would that be maybe Serena Deeb, I think, would be a standout because, one, she's worked for the WWE before, and it's not a big deal for AEW to have Serena Deeb 
thrown out in a Royal Rumble match. Some of these rumors are also suggesting that the open door policy that WWE has for the Women's Royal Rumble applies for the Men's Royal Rumble as well. So I don't know who you would see in that case come out. I mean, I know the WWE wanted to sign Moose for a long time, but there's something in his past that kind of makes them not want to sign Moose. But Moose kind of fits their style. He's, you know, a big former football player guy. He is the Impact Champion, to my knowledge, I think. Uh, would they have Moose come out and just do a little cameo there? Um, if the rumors are true with AEW working, I mean, I can see Sting. I can see Big Show. I can even see Cody Rhodes coming over. I know Cody Rhodes likes to do things that are uh, out of the ordinary, so I can see him wanting to do something like that. I don't know. This is just me brainstorming here, guys. This is not a report. This is not what I even think is going to happen. This is me just using my imagination, and that's what's so cool about something as simple as Mickey James entering in the 2022 Royal Rumble match is, is how like much you can play with that in your brain it's super super cool i'm looking forward to the women's royal rumble more than i ever have before because of this news who else will come out i think they showed a graphic of the women's royal rumble it featured the champion charlotte flair it featured the bella twins who haven't wrestled in years who else it featured lita and then of course i mentioned summer ray is going to be on there who else will be on there? We Are we going to have three champions in this match? Or, or maybe even the NXT Women's Champion. I can see the NXT UK Women's Champion appearing just for the novelty here. Uh, this is great. This is great, great, great shit. Um, another thing I'd like to talk about regarding the WWE is the Tag Team Championship on Raw. The title change. Uh, it went from RK-Bro to... Uh, Alpha Academy, Chad Gable, and Otis. Uh, this was great. I love Chad Gable. I even liked Otis. I thought when Otis had the money in the bank last year, they really squandered it by you know giving it to The Miz and having The Miz cash in to win the world title. I think you could have done a match with Roman Reigns and Otis, Mandy Rhodes in Otis's corner, Paul Heyman in Roman's corner. That could have been a big number on SmackDown. You have... Mandy, the visual of Mandy, you have the audio appeal of Paul Heyman, you put that together, you can sell some fucking tickets, you can sell some pay-per-views, I could even see that being a big B-show pay-per-view main event, but let me digress, let me go back to 2022, let me come back to reality instead of fantasy booking Otis in 2020, uh, Alpha Academy is the tag team champions, I love that, because one, now you can do the RK bro split, Riddle and Randy, Wrestlemania, this is great. Talking about the Royal Rumble, you have R you have Riddle accidentally throw out Randy. That pisses Randy off. RKO's Riddle in the ring. That leads to him getting thrown out. That can, you know, be the foil that heats up Riddle and Randy at WrestleMania. <clears throat> but also, I really like Chad Gable. I mean, he's won the Tag Team Champions Ch Ch tag Team Championship on NXT. He's won the Tag Team Championship on SmackDown and now on Raw. Tag Team Specialist Chad Gable. Pretty cool to see. And then I came to find out that they've been best friends forever. They came into the company together. I didn't know that. That's really cool. I really do wish, that, if I'm being nitpicky here, I really do wish that, they, that Randy Orton was never able to hit the RKO on Otis. They gave that storyline about a two week build and then they just threw it away one random raw. If they had that be the story behind it, that Otis's lack of neck is the reason that Randy Orton can't hit the RKO. One of the most devastating moves in sports entertainment cannot be applied to this man, therefore he reaches success. It's a cool story arc. You could play into that for years and years to come. That could be a house show uh, go to. But, you know, they gave it away on free TV. I'm being a little nitpicky here, but what can you do? Enough with WWE. Let's go into AEW. AEW had three big shows last week. Of course, Dynamite, Rampage, and then they did Battle of the Belts. 
13 big matches on AEW, and I ranked them all from worst to first. But before that, let's go into my overall thoughts on the overarching storylines and uh, promos and things. The things that happened outside the ring. The things that happened uh, not from bell to bell. The acclaimed announced that they were going to do a music video that was going to appear on Dynamite. That's pretty cool. I don't think it's going to be as cool as the Hit Road Cypher that won NXT TakeOver, but I think it'll be funny. The, uh, the claim is always entertaining. CM Punk and MJF. I mean, the War of the Wars continue to just be amazing. Uh, you know, Punk ruins MJF's record for 2022. GTS and his opponent so that MJF gets qu- disqualified hilarious and then he says this is what's going to happen until you face me and mjf super pissed says you think you're roddy piper but roddy piper had his moment at wrestlemania which i thought was hilarious to say and then he goes on and says you know what you son of a bitch you want it you got it next week is going to be cm punk versus wardlow Crowd chance bullshit. New Jersey's not having it. But of course, that's perfect, perfect heel shit. Uh, I wonder what's going to happen here. Maybe this will be what we all wanted, where Wardlow finally has enough with MJF. And he jumps out of the ring, gets himself counted out, so that we get MJF versus CM Punk. And then MJF is so pissed about that, that we get MJF versus Wardlow. Maybe Sean Spears, the chairman, comes after Wardlow, and we get Sean Spears and Wardlow. Uh, you can do so much here. It, you know, it's, it's really cool. Uh, I don't really know where this Kingston versus Jericho feud is going. It's like members of the inner circle are teaming with Kingston. Jericho is helping Kingston, but Kingston and Jericho don't like each other, even though... They're kind of, you know, battling the same enemy with 2.0 and Danny Garcia. It took a long time for the MJF Jericho feud to uh, kind of come to fruition, but when it did, we got some great moments. Of course, the uh, Nick Gage uh, slicing Jericho's head with a pizza cutter while there was a pizza commercial in the picture, and the picture was great. Hooven to Carrera coming in to. Uh, to face Jericho was great, and then of course MJF saying that. Chris Jericho could, could not have entrance music, but then the crowd singing along anyways. Great moments, and that took a long, long time to get to. So hopefully this Kingston Jericho feud will kind of get the ball rolling here, because right now I'm not as into it as I would be um, if I saw that Kingston and Jericho were going to have a rivalry on paper. Is it even a rivalry yet? I don't even know what's going on. I do know what's going on with these JR sit-downs, though. They're always good. I really love Serena Deeb's JR sit down. I mean, it takes me back to when Mankind did his like uh, J- you know JR interview. I think it was even a VHS at the time. I remember Sean Spears did his JR sit down with when he had his match with Cody Rhodes at the infancy of AEW, and that was good. So anytime you see JR with a sit down, turn it up, sit back, and enjoy. It's going to be great. I also enjoyed everything that Sammy Guevara did. Uh, this week, you know, Sammy Guevara, I can take him or leave him most of the time, but he is developing into a star. He's a big deal. Uh, the hype video between him and Dustin Rhodes is great. The match between him and Dustin Rhodes is great. The promo after the match, the idea that he, Sammy Guevara and Daniel Garcia are going to have a feud, that's going to be great. Sammy Gar- you know, Guevara jumping all over the place. Daniel Garcia with his ground and pound offense. Works perfect. You tie that into the Inner Circle 2.0 feud. I mean, I'm into it. I'm into it. This is going to be a great match. Garcia, the IWTV Wrestler of the Year Award winner versus the interim TNT champion. Perfect shit here. Hope Cody gets uh, better soon. But let's break down all the matches from AEW Dynamite this week. 13 out of 13, MGF versus Sean Dean. Of course, I already said what happened. CM Punk came out and GTS Sean Dean. It wasn't much of a match, so, you know, it'll sit right there at number 13. Number 12 out of 13, Wardlow versus Antonio, who gives a fuck? You know, Powerbomb Symphony. You love it. Sean Spears loves it. 
but it wasn't much of a match. It sits at 12. Hook versus Aaron Solo. That sits at number 11. Um, you know, it's funny, the Hook thing. Of course, he's in strip clubs with Antonio Brown, which cracked me up. Uh, I enjoy everyone enjoying Hook more than I enjoy Hook, if that makes any sense. But going into the top 10 here, number 10, Baker and Hager versus Ruby Soho and Rio. Solid tag match that set the stage for the main event of Battle of the Belts. And what myself and a lot of people see as a rising tension in the Britt Baker faction kind of happened a little bit here as well. Number 9 and 10, Brian Pillman versus Malachi Black. This was awesome because Black, you know, kicked someone's head off. That's always cool to see. Pillman put up a little bit more of a fight than Griff, which is also cool to see. You can kind of see who's the Shawn Michaels and who's the Marty Jannetty of that tag team. But nonetheless, Black is probably moving on after this little small low-key feud with uh, uh, the Varsity Blondes. Maybe Julia Hart kind of follows Black. That'd be kind of interesting, like a small little girl who had a small run-in with Malachi Black somehow kind of starts to worship him a little bit. That would play into this cult-like figure that he has. But that's me fantasy booking here. Number 8 out of 10. Ricky Starks versus Matt Seidel, the middle match in Battle of the Belts. This match was made into the top 10 for just as much as what Hobbs was doing on the outside than what they were doing in the ring. Hobbs kicking uh, the dapper yapper out of his seat, but then when Starks spilled to the outside, Seidel couldn't really go after them as much as he wanted to because Hobbs just standing up his presence just kind of was enough for Seidel to kind of take a step back and be a little apprehensive. I also really liked Ricky Starks. I always loved Ricky Starks, but I really liked Ricky Starks picking Seidel up for not only a stalling suplex, but then he ran around with Seidel. That was pretty fucking cool. I love Ricky Starks, and I love that he has the FTW championship. Number 7 out of 10, Jade versus Ruby, the inaugural TBS championship match. This match was a spectacle of a match. It wasn't as good as you th- as I kind of think they wanted it to be. And the botched kind of sloppy finish took it out of the top five for me. And it sits at number seven. Number six, the Lucha Bros versus Jurassic Express. Solid tag match. Not as good as other Lucha Bros tag matches, but it was good enough. You know, they put the titles on Lucha or Jurassic Express. Uh, this was a packed week for AEW and it kind of sits at the middle of the pack you kind of forget that uh you know Jurassic Express won the tag team championship this week with everything else going on I hope Phoenix is okay that that was the craziest spot ever he just dives I think or no he jumps at Luchasaurus Luchasaurus catches him in a choke slam is supposed to pick him up and slam him through a table and his arm gets like, caught under his body in the table it looks off of Sid Vicious-esque arm break from Phoenix I hope he's okay I wonder what they're going to do with Pentagon if Phoenix is off and now he doesn't have the title that's going to be bad I think I don't know I hope hopefully Pentagon maybe he can wrestle Jay Lethal because once Jay Lethal signed he's been MIA so maybe you can do a feud with Jay Lethal and and Pentagon give them both something to do but the top five of AEW matches this week Adam Cole versus Jake Atlas number five sucks that Atlas got hurt here too he always impressed me on 205 live and NXT and here he was killing it not only killing it but towering over Adam Cole baby Cole is so over that any match he really does is easy to get into. It really always has that big fight feel. And, uh, you know, he gets a victory here. Number four out of 13, Britt Baker and Rio for the, the AEW Championship. It was great. The supporting characters at ringside were great. Made it have that big fight feel. Rio running up the table like it was a ramp to drop kick. Hater was awesome. Uh, I also like the double stomp to uh, Rebel's ass, which was funny. Talk about suspension of disbelief. I don't think that uh, Rebel even felt that, but, you know, we're going to play along here. But it wasn't enough. Britt Baker did tap out Rio to retain the championship. I kind of see this being Rio's last hurrah. She had the title. She didn't have the title. 
She fought valiantly to try to get the title back. She didn't have it. What more stories can you tell with Rio? I think she might be going back to Japan here, guys. I don't know. But number three out of 13, Kingston, Santana, and Ortiz versus 2.0 and Garcia. Just a giant brawl. So much fun. Not really much to say about it. Just six guys that are pretty underrated here. I mean, Santana and Ortiz, they've been in, you know, they, they've been with AW since the beginning. They always have good matches. They've been bulking up. And I don't know, they just constantly get lost under the shuffle for whatever reason. Uh, I want to see more from them in the, you know, going into 2022. Number two, Guevara and Dustin Rhodes. This match was awesome. Double springboard senton from Guevara was great. Canadian Destroyer threw a table on the outside was great. Dustin Rhodes still got it. Guevara is getting it. And, uh... I was shocked at how good this match was. I even put this match at uh, the number one spot of the week as far as wrestling. There's still a few more days to go in the week, but I think it's going to beat possibly all the matches on night three of Wrestle Kingdom. Or it did beat all matches of Wrestle Kingdom. We got Dynamite, we got Rampage, but I can't see a match being this good on those shows this week. But of course, the number one match from AEW Dynamite this week, or AEW television this week, was Hangman Page and Brian Danielson. This match was like five levels above any other match that I just mentioned. It wasn't as good as their first match, but this was Wrestle Kingdom worthy match here, and it kicked off Dynamite, kicked off the week of AEW television. It was everything that I love about pro wrestling all in one. Judges Mark Henry, Jerry Lynn, and Big Show at ringside if it goes down to it. Danielson and Hangman. Uh, great, great, phenomenal match. Uh, Danielson takes us to Larry Land at the beginning, even going outside doing jumping jacks, uh, trying to just uh, provoke Hangman. Hangman, suicide dive, he's seen enough. Moonsault. But lands on his feet as Danielson gets in the ring. Leads to an apron bomb. Danielson dodges the buckshot, though. Uh, Hangman goes for a dive. Danielson moves out the way. He eats shit into the guardrail. After that La Parca, uh passing, this was kind of a hard spot for me to see. But, you know, it happened. It was crazy. It's supposed to provoke uh, emotion, and it did provoke emotion. Chops that the whole crowd wooed along for. Danielson diving. Hangman, uh, you know, catches him in the suplex position as Danielson dove. I thought that was pretty cool. Hangman bleeding after uh, colliding into the steps. Death Valley driver from Hangman. Both men down. They stumble onto the floor, back into the ring. Headbutts, just bloody headbutts like not bloody headbutts but like literally they are bleeding while they are headbutting each other so much blood this was wild to see dead eye from hangman buckshot but no danielson collapses uh from all the pain and blood that he had already lost in the match so hangman could not hit his finisher on him so situation kind of led to Danielson saving himself from just being exhausted. Hangman slips out of a submission attempt by Danielson, catapult to the floor, moonsault by the champion on the floor. Huge knee from Danielson. One, two, Hangman kicks out. Uh, the only two people not on their feet in the whole arena here is the two competitors in the match. Got style, power driver, one, two. Hangman kicks out again. Buckshot, one, two, three. Hangman gets the victory. You gotta love that shit. Holy hell, I want a rubber match. I know, you know, it went the distance. Hangman won. But you can run it back one more time. We gotta see a rubber match from these guys. It's O, like Danielson is O, one, and one. Where... Hangman is 1-0-1. Oh, that tie kind of fucks up everything for both people. We need to see a definitive winner. And I don't think we have it, even though Hangman has beaten Danielson at this point. 
I think that uh, Danielson is the perfect person out of this roster to put over Hangman and solidify the first ever homegrown champion that AEW has. Of course, Hangman has been in Ring of Honor. He's been in New Japan Pro Wrestling. Don't get me wrong. But he's a bigger star now because of AEW. And he's an even bigger star because of the AEW Championship. Every other champion that AEW has had to this point has been from the WWE. They need to get rid of that stigma. They need to start creating stars. They did with Jungle Boy. They did with Sammy Guevara. And they need to do it with Hangman even more so than those other two wrestlers. And Brian Danielson is the best wrestler in the world. He was my wrestler of 2021. He is the guy that can help put Hangman over. I mean, unless you're talking about Kenny Omega, and Kenny Omega already did that. But that's it for AEW this week. We're going to be talking about Wrestle Kingdom Day 3, New Japan Pro Wrestling versus NOAA GHC. Three days after the second night, not in the Tokyo Dome, mostly tag ma- all tag matches except for the opening match. Uh, not quite the Wrestle Kingdom feel that you get in every other Wrestle Kingdom. I don't know why they didn't call this New Year's Dash. Of course, everyone knows that right after Wrestle Kingdom, there's a show usually in Corian called New Year's Dash. This would have been the best New Year's Dash of all time. But since they called it Wrestle Kingdom, it's the worst Wrestle Kingdom of all time. The worst night, the worst Wrestle Kingdom show ever. Uh, but, you know, it was good shit here. I really enjoyed the opening tag ma- or the opening match. Uh, Yatsi Takaru Taka. Takeino, hopefully I'm saying that right, versus Fujito, the two youngest wrestlers on both respective rosters. Yahtzee, uh, nice arm lock. F- Fujito fights off of it. Beautiful drop kick. Three minutes left. Fujito locks in the Boston Crab. Yahtzee hurting, but he gets to the ropes. Fujito locks in the Boston Crab again. Show desperation on his face. The bell rings. Uh... These two young upstarts stand up, show of disrespect at the end. They both just bitch slap each other, and this was a tie. Really cool shit here. A lot of fucking tag matches, though. The Funky Express versus Nagata, Tenzan, and Kojima. Uh, you know, whatever. Uh, Kojima wins with a lariat. Cool little hype video to hype up the main card. But as soon as I was getting hyped up, technical difficulties, black screen for a few minutes, and then we come back on, and then Ishii and Itamura, of all people, are just beating the shit out of each other, which is really cool to see. Uh, th- this match was a lot of fun because Ishii was involved. I think Ishii heard that, uh, you know, His match with Evil was the worst match on the card of Tokyo Dome night one or two. And I think he was a little more pissed off than usual. Uh, Ishii does hit a suplex, which was awesome. But uh, I'm trying to figure out who wins here. Oh, Yoshihashi, who was on his team, actually gets the victory for New Japan. Not a bad. Uh, I want to see more of this Ishii... uh, Itamio kind of thing. Uh, Itamora. Sorry, guys. Itamora. I'm not. I'm still getting used to these Noah names. Hopefully, you guys can forgive me. I hope that there's someone who's a big Noah fan listening to this podcast just yelling into the mic. And then we went into another singles comp- match. I forgot about this match. Uh, Atisha Koji versus Sho. I saw these young high flyers out there. You guys know I love high flying wrestling. I thought this was going to be good, but there was just more of that bullshit, the House of Torture bullshit from show, which sucks, because I never really liked Evil. I never really liked Yujiro. Dick Togo, I mean, you know, he's doing that manager role now. But I actually enjoyed show. So now that we know we could have gotten a show match, but we got a House of Torture match, it just fucking sucks. He uses a wrench to get the victory. Uh, we have uh, Hayata, who really impressed me. And uh, uh, Yashikua, they're known as Stinger, versus Ishimori and Goto. Not Ishimori and LP. Every match here, you could see who was getting the pin just by when they came out. Uh, You know, 
Hayata got the victory, which is cool. Noah on the board. We also got uh, Porus Del Moore, De Hapon versus uh, El Desperado and Duki. Uh, representing uh, Porus Del Moore, uh, Nosawa and Yohei. Uh, Pinche Loco, 1 2 3, Desperado wins. Um, you know, just more of that kind of shenanigans here. Sakurabo and Toriano teaming up, apparently old drinking buddies. Uh, with Segura uh, versus uh, Taka, Taichi, and Suzuki. And then here, Chris Charlton with the line of the night. If Orange Cassidy is a member of Chaos, then Sakuraba is a member of Chaos, which I thought was uh, ridiculous. The only time ever that Orange Cassidy and Sakuraba can kind of be in the same sentence here, but that's what you love about pro wrestling. Uh, Segura pins Taka. You can always tell who was going to get the pin here. And then we go on to Evil and Togo versus Go Shizaki and Missy Kitamiya. Uh, this was a waste of Go Shizaki. What little I know of Yoda of Noah is that Go Shizaki has great fucking matches. I reviewed the January first card with him in it, and he killed it. He had amazing matches, but here with with Evil, he kind of you know takes away the fun out of. Uh, having Goshizaki as the horn blows outside. They must be Goshizaki fans outside. But to my uh, amazement here, Goshizaki gets the win over Evil, which makes me think that they don't give a fuck about the 2020 title reign anymore. Evil is just some guy to uh, foil things for, you know, people that are actually supposed to be good. I don't know what they're thinking with that. Uh, I'm... It just is crazy. It's crazy. Once again, it would have been the best New Year's Dash ever, but since they call it Wrestle Kingdom, it's the worst Wrestle Kingdom card of all time. It has to be. Mare Fuji and Agoye versus Zack Sabre Jr. and Kinemaru. Of course, you guys know what happened. Uh, sliced bread. I don't care what you call it. It's going to be sliced bread to me. Mare Fuji hits it. One, two, three, K- Kinemiya, uh, Kin- uh, sorry, Kinmaru, you know, takes the fall, four, four, and one, so it's tie ball game right now, going into the best match, Congo versus LIJ, this was great, go out of your way to watch it, almost as good as Dustin Rhodes versus Sammy Guevara, I'll say that, everyone just had it, this is just a spectacle, a great time, and then, you know, we had the Pumping Bomber, one, two, to these names are crazy. Uh, to Tazake kicks out. Last of the Dragon one two three. Shingo wins for Lij. Great match here. Then you had you know Kinu and Naito staring each other down. The leaders of both factions staring each other down. Hopefully they're building something there. Uh, I want to you know if this was uh, the first chapter of Noah versus New Japan, this would be great. If this was just a one-off show, like a Saudi Arabia show, more or less, this would be really bad. But it looks like, you know, why not do it? Not a lot of foreigners can come in for both promotions. Uh, You know, why not have some interpromotional warfare here? And I think Kino and Naida would be amazing, amazing match. And I think, you know, it would... Why not? We want to see it. You teased it. Give it to us. Give the people what they want. you got to give the people what they want. As Excalibur says all the time with Chaos member Orange Cassidy getting the hug. But then it was main event time. The Great Mudo versus uh, Kido Kitamiya versus... or The Great Mudo and Kido Kitamiya versus Tanahashi and Okada. So we had Muda against Tanahashi. And then we had Muda versus Okada. That was pretty cool. Some dream sequences there. Tanahashi hits a dragon screw to Muda. Hot tag Okada. Okada comes in. Can't hit the Rainmaker. Gets hit with the Shining Wizard. Uh, hot tag to Kitamita. 20 minute mark. Sling blade to Kitamita. Shining Wizard to Tanahashi. All four men down. Kitamita, uh, you know, going for a German on Okada. One, two. Okada kicks out. Uh, Muda looks at Kitamiya and says, finish it, finish it, apparently. Uh, this was being translated for me. Uh, crowd believes it. Kitamiya is firing up, but Kitamiya slips 
He gets caught with a Rainmaker. One, two, three. Okada and Tanahashi win. Uh, Kinamita sitting there crying. So this was kind of good here. Kinamita crying because he can't win the big one. He can't win on the big stage against Okada. Wrestle Kingdom 9, Okada couldn't beat Tanahashi. He was crying at the end of Wrestle Kingdom. So if we're playing into this uh, poetic storytelling here, Kitamiya is going to be a big, big star in Noah. Maybe this will spin off to him beating Muda. Maybe we'll see him again in New Japan here. I don't see him beating Okada anytime soon, but I'm hooked now. Uh, will we see the rise of Kitamiya in 2022? I sure as fuck hope so. I hope you guys enjoyed this podcast. Uh, I'm trying a new mic out, guys. So hopefully the levels worked with me. Hopefully you guys stayed with me. As always, fly high. I'm out.